Subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update. If there is one thing that the COVID-19 has affected beyond repair, it's the travel and tourism industry. Travelling and going to places has never been the same for over a year now. With some countries relaxing their boundaries, some have still kept the news tightened. With varied rules and regulations, it has also given rise to ambiguity and it has majorly affected the plans of many students worldwide. With such a situation of the travel and tourism industry and new strains of the virus dominating the news headlines, studying abroad has also been hit massively. What is it that the students are missing out on? How are the global B schools coping up with this shift? How are students perceiving study abroad to be at the moment? And how can they get the much needed global exposure in their academic career for which they cross borders? All this and a lot more will be covered in this special episode of Decoded. Studying abroad, especially in the Indian context, has always been big. Reports have shown how India and China are the biggest markets for study abroad and a lot of universities across the world look at these countries every season for their batches. Since at Inside IIM we talk mostly about the world of MBA, we would give you an outlook of it from the perspective of global business schools offering the degree. Now if you look at numbers, Indian students taking the GMAT exam has been on a constant rise year on year. In 2014, where only 28,345 students took the exam, in 2018, the number rose to 32,425, 43% of which applied for a full-time two years MBA program at different universities. Due to the pandemic and lockdowns in many parts of the world, the exam was shifted to online mode to make life easier for the students. But the numbers are on a downfall since 2019. While in 2019 only 30,590 students took the exam, the numbers are expected to be even lower in 2020. So does that mean that the global recession and now the global pandemic is causing more and more Indian students to choose not to opt for studying abroad? This year, we unfortunately, uh, the batch of IMB2 had to skip his in Milan. But we try to make up, as I said, with uh, international work from home uh, internships that were very meaningful, international researches with companies in Europe, uh, global speakers. Apart from that, sincerely, I hope that will not happen again because this team, those four months are very important. They are four months of specialization also. Vaccination is coming in strongly. And with vaccination, I think travel will be possible again. We still have 85% of the faculty that teaches in Mumbai that comes from Milan. That will definitely happen. More than the faculty coming, which is not a problem, for the reasons I told you, is to be able to be in classroom here in Mumbai, uh, for which also we're studying uh, alternative ways, because we definitely want to be back into classroom. Financial aid and an assurance that their investments will grow after a degree from abroad are the two major considerations for students who opt for international studies. In India, the traditional two-year MBA program accepts applicants with little or no experience. Given the huge supply of qualified manpower, recruiting companies looking at filling up junior level positions are spoilt for choices. Hence, to stand out from the crowd, students decide to make their mark by choosing a B-school abroad. Slowly, students in India are understanding that just their engineering degrees won't give them better career opportunities, higher salaries and international mobility in the longer run. Here is where the aspiration for an international MBA germinates. But with this decision comes the bigger question. How are they going to fund their education? An MBA student who decides to take up a $100,000 education loan, ending up not getting a job due to the current situation would certainly something that will cross a lot of students' mind at the moment. Students either offer huge loans or crack scholarships to help them fund their education. A lot of them decide on earning a living and support their education while they are studying. But with the trying times we are living in and the bigger picture of the job market that is emerging worldwide, students are going to find it extremely difficult to meet this need. 
Talon Homsen, Executive Director of South Asia for GARC Global Services, recently stated that several factors such as degree, mobility, the financial angle, part-time work opportunities affect the decision of an Indian student to study abroad. With the global business environment looking unstable, the students are also skeptical about the job opportunities in the future. Although these are challenges that these trying times have posed in front of the students, the one thing that the students definitely are going to root for is the global exposure that these institutions provide. Right from learning from the best possible faculty members to attaining the best academic material, understanding newer approaches to problem solving and interacting with a diverse set of peers is something that makes studying abroad all the more special. But will it ever be possible to get the same global exposure through your B school? I think that lately Indian students uh, have realized uh, have realized why we make we came to India because India is going to be the future. India has uh, uh, the most thriving job market uh, right now in the world, uh, despite of despite of people saying hiring are not good in India. There's no other place that is hiring like in India right now, even right now. Uh, and uh, uh, India, in India, careers are 10 times faster than what you can get abroad. India is changing even faster. Uh, not only that, uh, India is, uh, I think, the, uh, it's a concentration of the world in terms of diversity. There's no other country like India that has the same diversity, which in turn is what boosts your managerial experiences, uh, skills, uh, and uh, uh, what I always say uh, nowadays is if you make it in India, you can make it everywhere. I cannot tell you how many more times applications we've had this year of outstanding students, uh, because I think now it's the right choice. Even no, more now, but independently from COVID, I think that uh, 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 India is the market of the future. India is the market that with its diversity and with its access to innovation, to new models, is the one that can prepare you the best. With the vaccines for the COVID-19 in sight, it's a matter of time when things will come back to normal. Institutes globally will also start looking at students coming in from different countries for their on-campus programs. But for now, a lot of these institutes have built a business model where setting up facilities added on to their fixed costs. Faculties, infrastructure, state-of-the-art facilities, different disciplines all come at a cost for the institute to maintain. And so, a lot of them are not very adaptable to change. But the ones with vision in the future did. Now is the time for the universities to be more flexible in how they impart education and that is exactly what is going on currently in the world. A balance of online and offline education is being achieved. Institutes that have shown immense potential in adapting to such changes are going to thrive in the time to come and more and more students are going to learn from these B-schools in the coming years through the blended mode of education. I think a postgraduate education in India is well done, which means uh, a lot of contact with the corporates, a lot of extracurricular activities, a lot of events and things, which is what we try to give. What we've done this year is we have tried to leverage the maximum, uh, the opportunity that the digital world uh, gives you. We are dying to get back to classrooms, but some of these things, we will keep them because it's a huge leverage, it's a huge, uh, uh, added value that we can give to the students. Even though Australia has registered very few COVID cases in the recent past, very few Indian students are choosing to study at Australian universities. According to recent reports, the number of Indian students who started studying at Australian universities in 2020 has dropped by almost 80%. Now it is related directly to travel restrictions and border closures, I agree. But there definitely is going to be a sharp decline in the student numbers worldwide thanks to the aftermath of the ongoing global pandemic and economic effects. In such a scenario, a demand for a good MBA from India is definitely going to be on the rise. Students should look out for B-schools in India that has tied up with international institutions to bring in global education at the doorstep at competitive prices so that the students don't have to compromise on global exposure. 
professional who sought work experience in India and then decided to go for an MBA degree abroad also is looking currently at an alternative option in India and that has resulted in the Indian MBA institutes getting more students joining in in the near future. Now whether you want to take a leap and go for an MBA degree abroad or want to choose to stay in India and opt for a degree that gives you a global outlook and exposure is a decision that you need to take. We can only leave you with one thought. No matter which B school you choose to take your career forward, learning will never stop.